retired Army General Russell Honoré. He joins us from, uh, where are you, General? Where are you located? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He played a crucial role, speaking of Louisiana, in post-Katrina relief efforts, and he's been critical of the Trump administration's response to the pandemic. He joins us from Louisiana. Uh, what do you make of these reports about the Russians paying a bounty to kill American soldiers in Afghanistan? Uh, very discouraging, but to be expected from the Russians. They will go as low as they can go to impose their will. Uh, they will also use information operations to exploit this to cause dissent in the American people. So they will use this as soft power, and they apparently may have used it as direct power by giving money to the Taliban to kill our soldiers. Then uh, when it, the word come out about it, we'll deny it like hell and we'll uh, it, blow it up in the press and in the media on social media to cause dissent inside the United States. So it's a, they're swinging the axe both ways, Larry. Former Congressman Bob Barr was with us, and he tended to not believe the reports because it would, to him would no sense for the Russians to do anything like this. What do you well, make of that Well, that's the thing about it. Uh, it doesn't make sense, but under their disinformation and misinformation, remember their job in the Russian intelligence agency is to cause dissent inside the American government. Uh, I, too, would like not to believe it, but until it's disproven at this time, I think we've got to go with the fact that they have done it. We all remember how strong you were with Katrina. What do you think of how we're dealing with COVID-19? Well, I think we, you know, in every war, you got to have priorities. We were saying the right thing that we want to save people's lives, but we confused that with wanting to open the economy too early. And we put a political message ahead of public health. It's time the American people and those who have done it successfully, like New York and others, who put public health in front of sustaining the economy. And when the economy was closed, we had still had 70% of it operating in most places. But this move to, I think we rushed to failure uh, by not following the messages of public health, keeping things locked down, making folks wear their masks, and I'm saying making, because it should be a no mask, no enter. We send and, out and mixed messages. Home. Trump won't wear a mask. Uh, the vice right. president will wear a mask, then he doesn't wear a mask. Uh, the president doesn't talk about COVID-19 anymore. I looked at it, this seems like a loss. Well, when you look at the number of people we're losing every day, uh, many, a couple of weeks up, over a thousand a day. I think last week we were over 300 a day. If an enemy force came to America and doing that, we'd be at full out battle rattle war. And this uh, virus is treating us that way, but we've got to fight it with the tools of public health. And that has to be done. We, we're going to have to give up, and in some case, adjust our culture to be able to suppress this virus. And we need to do more testing, not less testing. And this whole uh, bumper sticker that the White House have, the more tests you do, the more you have. My God, man, wh where did that, who planted that in the White House? I mean, that sounds like something a fourth grader would say. What, what has New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut done right? Uh, they closed it down. Uh, they kept all the non-essential businesses closed, uh, only keeping the supply chain open so they could get food and essential medical supplies. And they went big on medical. Uh, they brought in 30,000 medical workers into New York, plus the several thousand the military took there to take care of the people. They went big, but they had to go big. You're talking about a municipality of about 8 million people. Well, that's more than most of the states on average. It's, more, it's twice the population of the state of Louisiana. And they went big, and they did it right. And I think they spoke primarily with one voice, those three states. And that's helped them a lot. 
General, you're a member of a growing list of current and former military leaders who criticized Trump's response to racial justice demonstrations. Some of your problems with how the president has handled it or not handled it. Well, he's kind of looked the other way. And he could have been a lot more decisive in united in the country. I think there's a majority of the population from all our pool, the polls that I've seen on the topic, uh, people have come to uh, an understanding, the majority in, uh, in America, the majority of the race in America, the white people in America has come to the conclusion that, hey, this hasn't been done right, and we can do this better. And there are things that we've done in the past we need to correct. But he's never made that step to said, we're going to fix some of this on my watch. He's never acknowledged it. Do you think he understands and respects the values and missions of the U.S. military? I think he uses it as a toy. As he, uh, he tries to use it as a political instrument and as a one-liner in his speech to claim that we have no bullets when he took office. Uh, that's not quite right. Did he put more money into the military? But on the other hand, he took $3 billion out to go build the fence wall which last week a judge declared was illegal. When he took that money out of the military, it stopped building houses for troops. It stopped building headquarters for troops. It stopped repairing hospitals for troops. So on one hand, they moved that money, which the military could not commit, to go do a border wall and stop military construction. The very people he attempts in his speeches to put at the top of the pedestal, in essence, he used him as a political pawn and one-liners in the speech. As a military veteran, is it uncomfortable for you to speak against the commander-in-chief? I've never done that before in my life. I was in Korea as a company commander when President Nixon resigned, and I thought the world was coming to an end. I didn't think that would happen in America. And here we are, lo and behold, uh, another crazy act uh, of inconsistency. Everybody respect that office of what that means and the most powerful man in the world. I would wish he would respect it and try to live up to what is expected of people in that office. But he continues to act like an entrepreneur as opposed to a statesman. What do you make of the use of military to curb domestic riots, you bringing the military into a local situation. That is a, uh, using the National Guard, that's one of the purposes of them, under the provisions of the governors. And that's the way that should be done. With a couple exceptions, we saw uh, President Kennedy and Eisenhower mobilize the National Guard to integrate schools which was a federal law that was being violated. And it's done been done before. And we saw the use of federal troops in LA when the governor of, of California and the mayor of Los Angeles asked for federal troops to come uh, bring peace to the city of LA after the LA riots. But that is a selective tool that should not be used very often. And it should not be used as a threat on the people. The president took it to another level well, I'll just send federal troops here. I'll send federal troops there. Wait a minute, hold it. You, you, you look like you weren't having fun with this, you know, as opposed to regrettingly having to do this. He was enthusiastic about wanting to do it. And that's the impression I got, sir. James Carville, the raging Cajun, I said the other day that he thought they should rename a military base after you. You should be honored. How do purely, you feel? That was purely in jest. Uh, while I appreciate the honor from my good friend, that was purely in jest. They're much men, much more worthy than I. Many of them didn't make it back from battle. Many of them had multiple tours in Vietnam. There are many more worthier than I, sir. Trust me. What do you make? Of, what do you make of the statue situation? I think some of them should go away, and I do think the naming of those military installation after the Confederate generals and colonels should definitely go away. 
Uh, but I take pause and I just beg to disagree with some of the movement now to uh, take on the founding fathers. And I could even give Andrew Jackson a pass. He did terrible things to uh, the native people. But he was a president, and in a way, he tried to unify the country. But the, the native people paid dearly for that, thousands and thousands of them. But I could be on the fence with him. But the founding fathers, I think, it was what it was. And they get sacrificed a lot. And I think we need to give them a pass, Washington and, uh, and Thomas Jefferson. General in general, are you optimistic or pessimistic about where this country is going? I'm optimistic as hell because we got a resilient country. And most people on any given day are going about their business, Larry, thank God. It's the ones like me that's uh, semi-retired that sit around and watch the news all day that's raised a lot of hell. But to the average American, uh, they just want to raise their families. The dilemma now is the viruses. The pandemic has hit us. Uh, had it not been for the pandemic, Americans would be doing what they normally do in the summer, out having fun. And on the 3rd of November, about 50% of them would go vote if we're lucky. You think they're going to defeat the president in November? I think with the pandemic and the state of the economy and some of the behaviors of the president, I think he'll be a one-term president. And I'm not a political expert. I mean, looking at the name of your show, I'm sure you have people <laughs> who have opinions about that. I mean a lot more than I do. But I, I think, and I, and I kind of hope he'd be a first a one-term president. And that's not a, that's not a second-class job to have been a one-term president. That's a pretty tough job to get. He won it, and he, uh, he, he worked his butt off to win it. But I think him being a one-term president might be the best for the future generations of this country. General, you're always on the point. You never miss you saying what you think. Thanks for being with us. Y'all have a good day and be safe.